Welcome back to another scum guide everybody. So today is going to be a, an in-depth medical guide for you all. So I'm going to go through the medical features, what you can find to help you treat the medical side of things. Um, I'm just going to explain a bit more in depth basically for any new players that are jumping into scum in 2023. This will just give you a basic understanding of how to deal with any injuries you may come across. So if you hit tab and then under you've got one two three four five six seven across the top under four is your metabolism tab now this shows you not only your health it also shows you your stats also shows you all of your skills and it also has your health bar here so with this we have our health this shows our overall health we have our overall blood inside our body now i have given myself a severity of thirst now this just means that i'm severely dehydrated as you can see here so what this will do once this progresses to 100 percent it should give me dehydration stats which then just means i need to drink water and that will then stabilize itself and go back to normal obviously with our food we are over what we need to be so 131 our burn rate is 96 calories and our intake rate is 198 so we're gaining more than what we're burning off at the moment so this is why this stat is over 100 percent i went through this a little bit on our last guide so you can go and check that out here if not perfectly fine i may go through a in-depth food guide so I'll explain about all this more in depth and I'll go through all the different foods and what you need for vitamins and stuff like that. But I'll probably wait until the food, uh, the cook, sorry, the cooking and the hunt and rework has been implemented. So then I think it'll be a bit more up to date for everyone. So what we're going to do now is explain through this a little bit more. So as you can see here on our skeleton body here, we have a diagram. Now this shows every area that you can get hit so your head torso right arm left arm we've got right leg left leg and your feet so it only shows as your left leg right leg but you can injure just your feet and you can get hand abrasions also so a hand abrasion will occur when you're doing stuff like crafting items without any gloves on so as you can see i have a pair of gloves on if i was doing bits and bobs now it wouldn't affect me you don't have a pair of gloves on you'll slowly start getting a hand abrasion injury if that then goes all the way up you'll then get a c1 injury so here you go now so dehydration because i've left myself to dehydrate completely now we've got the symptoms of thirst weakness and fatigue so because i'm now a water deficiency c1 this then gives us these two effects now to treat this, all you need to do is just drink some fluid. It could be any fluid whatsoever. Water, preferably, would be your best bet. As you can see, it occurs when water levels fall but below 0%. It has three stages and its symptoms are the following. Weakness and fatigue. While untreated, you are gradually losing health. Treatment. Drink water until you recover lost water supplies. 30% water is needed to fully heal. So obviously if I keep leaving this, as you can see, the deficiency is going up. 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 and it will keep climbing until this becomes a water deficiency C2 and this will just worsen the effects of what they already are so again your health will continue to drop um, as a C1 it's not too bad but try not to get yourself to this point you know there's plenty of water sources around you, you can always find water if you find a canteen you can then fill that up and that has I believe 10 uses that you can use uh, I don't think I actually have anything to drink on me. Oh, I do. I have some milk. Well, we're just going to drink this. And we'll watch this bar. Because, as you can see, our stomach's going to fill up now where we're drinking. You see what's going inside is milk. You don't want to let your stomach go above 90%. If it gets too full... You then have effects that then affect you weakness and running and stuff like that because you're too you're stuffed basically 
So that got to 68%. And as you can see, this is now climbing and our water deficiency is now gone. So obviously with this, as this empties into our intestines, this will go through into our bladder and our bladder will fill up and then we'll need to urinate at a later stage. Now, if you do need to do this, just hold tab down. You see here, toilet. Click on that and you can have a pee, a poo, or you can vomit. So say if I've just eaten something that I've gathered like a like a mushroom and I haven't read up about it properly or I don't know what the effects are, and I eat it and it gives me some negative effects, I can force myself to vomit that back up. Now, this can come in handy because if you accidentally drink petrol or something like that, again, you can bring it back up. Generally, unless you drink a lot of it, it's not going to affect you too much. Um, I've done it a few times where I've, I've just hit the wrong button and he's just started drinking from a fuel station rather than filling up the gas can. So, you know, you can cancel it pretty quickly. Just hit escape on your keyboard and it will cancel the, um, the action that you're doing. So, so as we can see now, bottom left hand corner, sorry, didn't mean to move my mouse to try and point down there then. You can see our, our water levels are going up now, so it's 10%, 11%. And this is the same as you can see in here. Okay. So everything you can see down the bottom left hand side is just basic version of this here. Let's say I'm sprinting over here. Jump off this. There you go. So I've now just given myself C1 injury from full damage. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to lose blood. I've just lost health straight off the bat because I've obviously injured myself, so I'll, I'll lose health from that. Now, on top of that, while you're bleeding, you'll lose health and you'll lose blood. Now, with a C1 injury, they'll close themselves. As you can see, it's, it's treating itself, it's going down. You can treat this by clicking on it and then clicking on an item that you have in your inventory. See, at the moment, if we uncraft these, got a load of bandages on us that we weren't using. So if these are in your inventory, if you click on your C1, you can now see they're all here. So if you just click on two of these and hit treat, two rags will treat a C1 injury. So we just wait one second, let this go up and done. So that now that C1 injury has gone from untreated to stabilizing. Again, if you hold control on any of these items, it will show you exactly what I'm talking about now. So at any point in the game, if you're confused or you need to know something, just hold control down over the item. Again, with any of these, you can do it. Hold control down and it will tell you a list of things you need for it. So as you can see, we had wound germs, nothing, but we had some external pathogens go into our body. Now, our immune system has taken care of the pathogens. We don't need to use any disinfectant or any antibodies or you know antibiotics or anything like that. Now, we are going to have a pain symptom from this, which as you can see is here. Causes a limp? No. So if this was a high severity, it would cause a limp and then you would not be able to run. But again, hold control and it will tell you the effects of it. So... C1 injury, very basic, very easy to, to maintain. Obviously, you don't need to heal it. It will heal itself and close itself up. So, yeah, he's going to see me and shoot me. Right, so we'll just close that second now. Right, so we have a C4 injury into the upper part of the abdomen here. So the best way to sort out a C4 injury. Now you can use rags. It takes five rags to close the C4 injury, which we don't have at the moment. So what you can use is a tourniquet if you have one. Now with a tourniquet, this will close your wound straight away. So this is the fastest way to close a C4 wound. Now, with your medical stat, so as you can see, C4 is now closed. 
Okay, our immune system's covering all pathogens, so that's perfectly fine. And this will slowly close. Now, if I was to get up and start sprinting around, as you can see, this drops when you're sprinting. Because when you're running around with a C2 or higher injury, they will open back up when you're sprinting. So when you have these injuries, you do need to either walk or jog very lightly. So I either walk at this pace or at this pace. You can go at this pace, it won't affect it. But if you're fully sprinting around as you can see it drops. So be careful of opening your injuries back up because if you only have one tourniquet and you're running out of rags and bandages Obviously, with that, you're gonna have it. You're gonna have a problem because if you open this back up, you're then not gonna be able to close it again. So a C1 injury, you can heal by itself. You don't have to intervene with it, but you can do if you want to stop any bleeding or anything preemptively. Now, with a C2, C2, a C3, and a C4 injury will not close themselves. You'll have to do that yourself. So with your medical skill, you go into here intelligence so if you're starting off with nothing you can't use rag strips to treat c3 or a c4 injury so rag strips you'll get from rags so like a rag here we we can cut this into rag strips now you can use rag strips to treat wounds if you're a high enough level in your medical skill What I would say, if you have no medical skill, the best thing to, for you to do is to carry around rags with you. There are many items you can use to treat yourself on the Scum Island. Now, you'll find alcohol and stuff around the island. You can use this as a booster for your immune system to kill off any pathogens or anything. Um, this will just help in the, in the short term, so you don't have to take antibiotics if you do get an infection in the long run. Now, rag strips. You can get rag strips from rags. You can get rags from cutting up clothes. So generally I carry rags around with me because I generally start with zero medical skill when I start a new character. Now, when you have no medical skill, you can't use rag strips to heal a C3 and a C4 injury. You can only use rags. So I generally take rags with me, bundle them up, so you can have five rags, you can bundle them up into a bundle of rags and then that only takes up two spaces in your inventory rather than the five for the five rags you're originally carrying. So for a C4 injury, you're going to need five rags to treat it, whereas you only needed one tourniquet. For the hemostatic dressing, you only need two of these for a C4. You need three emergency bandages or three pressure dressings. For a C4 injury. So as you can see, depending on what it is, depends on the amount you need to heal yourself. So again, depending on a C2, C3, C4, what injury you have, depends on how many you need. For a C1, it's two rags. For a C2, it's three rags. For a C3, it's four rags. And for a C4, it's five rags. So you can get painkillers, antibiotics, you can get vitamin pills, stuff like this. So again, going back to our vitamins here, as you can see, I'm lacking some vitamins. If we had some vitamin pills on us, we took some of them. Obviously, this would help us with our vitamins. So stop getting us, stop us from getting vitamin deficiencies in certain areas and stuff like that. Generally, you come across all this sort of stuff in bunkers. So where we are now, you can find all this stuff here. Obviously, this is a military style bunker, so we've got quite a lot of military um, buildings here. There's also a bunker here as well, so if you go down, there's usually medical bays and things you can find inside the bunkers, and they're very good for medical items. Now, inside the said medical bunkers, you'll see boxes like this. Now, in these boxes, you will need to pick lock them to get inside them. It's not always guaranteed, but if you're lucky, you'll get one of these called a PT29 Rapid Recovery Serum or Phoenix Tears as they're commonly known. Now these were a experimental 
you know, thing brought out by Tech One. Um, and they apparently can bring people back from the dead. I have not tried this, but I've heard that you can inject someone when they die and you can bring them back. I haven't tested it, so don't take my word on that because, you know, it could just be someone trolling. No idea. I will at some point test it and see if it works. But basically, with these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to get Big Boy here to shoot me. Come on. Alright, so we limp back in here because then he can't see us. Oh. Okay. He gave us two C4 injuries there. So, what we need to do, if we really wanted to, we could just go in our infantry, hit this, and just inject. Now, I would only use these in dire situations. As you can see now, our two C4s have gone straight to recovery. And our health is now shooting back up from 35% and that'll go straight back up to 100. Now, our blood will eventually go back up as well. There you go. Phoenix Tears are a way of getting yourself out of a very tight situation. So if you're in a combat situation or sometimes you'll find that you get trapped by a mech out in the open somewhere, if they do shoot you enough, you'll start to limp. And usually when you start to limp, it's game over when you're involved with a mech because they will just cut you down. Now, if you could get into some sort of cover while you have your limp and you have Phoenix Tears on you, I would generally use them there because then it would give me the time and the opportunity to get away and get out of sight, you know, of the mech because the mech's going to follow you around that corner and look at you again. So, yeah. Again, combat situations, if you're in a player or in a combat situation and he's tagged you good, you know, you're, you're limping around, or if he tags you really good and you lay down in a bush, they might think you're dead and they're going to push your body. Now, in that time where you're trying to heal and do all this other stuff, because obviously with a C4 injury, you'd have to treat it. So you have to treat, if you select whatever you're selecting, if you haven't got tourniquets and you only got rags, you don't have to use five rags, so click on five rags, click treat, and that will then use those five rags to treat that. Now, depending on your medical skill, it will depend how quick you treat yourself. The medical skill only dictates how quickly you can treat yourself. So how quickly this bar treats. Stabilization and the recovery side have nothing to do with medical skill. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't influence these parts. So with that in mind, if you have an advanced medical skill with a C4 injury and you used five rags, that would treat a lot quicker than if you had no medical skill using five rags on a C4 injury. So really, the medical skill only really dictates that. It can come in handy because if you're in, again, one of those situations of a PvP, you know, combat situation and you're getting pushed and you haven't got time to go through that process of that healing process, you know, by that time, by the time that's gone round, that player is going to push around this corner and shoot me because when I'm in that healing process, I can't do anything. You know, it's like when I'm crafting or when I'm doing something else, I can't do anything unless I hit escape and come out of the action. And by the time I've done that, drawn my weapon, it's too late. So Phoenix Tears, if you can find them, are really good and they have three uses each. So I don't know where the other one just went. I just had it in my hand. Oh, it's in my hand. Such a dumbass sometimes. So as you can see, I've used one and it's gone down to two. So we still had two uses of this. So we could have just potentially saved ourselves from losing all the loot we've gathered that day to a player. We could have then gained all their loot and we've still got two uses of our rapid recovery as well as being a full bill of health. So as you can see now, just from that one carton of milk earlier, our, our, our water's gone straight up to 101 now. So our intake rate is 95 mil, our water reserves are 485 mil, and we're only using 49 mil an hour. So, you know, I've got about seven hours worth of water before I'm, again, really dehydrated to that stage again now. 
So it's not hard to keep these topped up. Obviously, if you keep this over 100% all the time, you're then going to gain fat. Obviously, as you can see at the moment, we've got 60% fat, 27% muscle. You, again, hold control over any of these, and it will show you what the effects are of it. Again, with all these, anything. So if you are struggling as a new player to, to sort of figure out things, just hold control on every everything this comes up with. Well, I say everything. These are done. But these are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, you've got your heart rate. You've got your uh, blood pressure. You've got your oxygen levels. And then we've got our um, our temperature. So with temperature, you can get sort of like different diseases and, you know, stuff from, from the islands. So you can get stuff like trench foot, hypothermia, hypothermia. Um, so being too cold, being too hot. So the difference is... If you're down in a cold climate and you've got hardly any clothes on, you're going to start freezing to death. So you'll get hypothermia. And then you'll slowly get C1 hypothermia up to a C4 and then die. Now with hypothermia is where you're overly dressed or you're in too much of a warm climate and you're sprinting around everywhere, you know, constantly. Your body temperature is going to rise and it's going to rise and it's going to rise and you'll get overheated. Again... These things will affect your body. Um, but again, they're, they're quite easily solvable. Either put on more clothing or, you know, don't be sprinting around everywhere in a hot climate with jeans, you know, three, four layers of clothing on because it's not going to help. Now, so these are all pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, just think of your daily life of how you live. You know, again, with I don't expect you to know what all of these mean. I don't know what all these mean i had to sit here and casually just learn them you know you can learn what you need for them what's the best sort of sources of food for them and stuff um this is a brand new player i haven't really done much with this player except from done these couple of recordings so far so it's not going to look too good for me at the moment let's do this one more time Okay, so again, another C4. So as you can see with this C4, we have a uh, pathogen marker here. So external germs are 6.9% and our immune system is only 6%. So as you can see with this... Okay, yeah, it's gone. I thought he was coming around to that window then. So as you can see with this, obviously our immune system isn't going to be able to cover all the external pathogens. So we're going to have 0.9% wound germs in this wound. So, what we can do is, I'll just run back over it quickly now he's gone. Pick this up. We can now treat this, so click on the C4 and it'll bring up this menu. So we can now use this to treat. If we look here, it should give us a boost. So this infectant is 8% on top of our 6% of our immune system. So now the wound germs won't be present. See? It's gone. Now what we need to do is we now need to close this up. So we can obviously just use the one tourniquet if we needed to. We can use a couple of these if we wanted. I don't know if this will close it, but we'll give it a go. One pressure dressing, one emergency bandage, and one rag. So it's five rags normally, or three of the others. So I don't think this will close it. But we'll give it a go. So as you can see, what I was stating earlier about when you're in this process, you can't do anything. I can't draw my weapon. I can't move. I'm just stuck here healing. So if you're getting pushed by a player, rather than this healing process, especially if you don't heal the injury, you then could use Phoenix Tears because that will get you out of this situation pretty quickly. Now we'll just close this up using these two. This should work now. So with a C4 injury, you only need two hemostatic dressings so yeah there we go so now that's closed and we dealt with the wound germs as well so obviously if you don't treat your wound germs and they get to a certain level you can get infections and stuff like that i don't know how prominent they are because i haven't had an infection in a very long time to be fair and scum um but obviously you can use 
antibiotics to deal with that. You can find them in these tablet forms, in these, sorry, pot forms. Um, you also have them in little packs of tablets and bigger sort of boxes of tablets. You can also get painkillers. So if you are in pain, like we are now, we can take these. Let's just find them quickly. Painkillers. Just take a couple of these. Then as you can see, 9% is uh, suppressed. So this will now go up and our pain will slowly be suppressed. So again, you can hold control on this. And it'll give you a bit more detail into it. So all it does is just affect your movement speed and your pace. Because it causes you to limp if you're in too much pain. Now obviously taking painkillers will stop that because it will sort of subdue the effect. So if you're limping around and you've got painkillers on you, if you take the painkillers and wait for the effect to take place, then obviously you can then, you won't then have the limp and you'll be able to get away a bit quicker. Now moving around like this, when I've got these injuries and while I'm while this is stabilizing, obviously as I said, if you're sprinting around, it will hurt you. Because it'll open back up. Now, best thing for you to do is find yourself a nice little spot. Uh, da, da, da. I don't want to dance. Definitely don't want to dance. We want to just sit down. Sitting down like this, or laying down in the uh, the same action bar, like this. So either one of these two, this will actually help with your recovery stage. Because you're not moving around, because you're not doing anything, this recovery stage will be quicker. And as you can see there, our pain's now suppressed. I think we've pretty much covered everything medical-wise, sort of like in-depth. So this should help you get out of sticky situations, it should help with, you know, just your general day-to-day -day getting around. Anything this helps with puppets. You know, you might get slapped by a few puppets and, and you're going to be screwed because you don't know how to heal yourself. But now you do. So, hope this helped. Obviously, be careful if you're in bunker areas with the mechs, getting spotted by them. I got shot once and I had a C4 injury and it took about half my health nearly. So, taking two or three shots off one of them potentially could kill you sometimes they've got crap aim and you know they might not hit you the first three or four times but if you let them continue shooting at you those guns speed up and i mean speed up and i'm going to show you quickly if i can get them to do it actually See how they're getting quicker. One, two, three, dead. And they were leg shots as well. So, as you can see, pretty easy to get killed by a mech. And that's not even his fastest rate of fire. It literally sounds like a minigun being shot at you. So, again, new players, be careful if you're in bunker areas or any sort of military areas that have mechs, okay? The bigger threat is going to be your PvP side. So, again, take what I've said today with bandages, rags, certain items you can find. Obviously, tourniquets are going to be a bit harder to find than what others are. But... Hey, go search those medical bays down in the bunkers. I guarantee you'll find some good medical stuff to use. Well, I hope this little guide has helped you out today. Just a basic medical side of things to get you on your way on the Scub Island. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. See ya.